Hi, it's Sherry Karp and I am here today with a video to talk about tools for ministry and why I chose the Kindle Scribe over the Remarkable 2. When I saw the Remarkable 2, I thought I just had to have it. It was so beautiful. Uh, it was also pricey and so, um, you know, I kind of said, no, I'll opt for the Kindle Scribe instead. And I didn't really want the Kindle Scribe, but I ended up getting it. Well, I decided, you know, the Remarkable is what I want, so I'm going to get it. And so after using the both of them, um, thinking that I was going to return the Scribe because it had sat in the box and I didn't even open it because it wasn't what I really wanted. Uh, after I received the Remarkable and used it, uh, I was a little disappointed. I was a little disappointed. So the Remarkable is a wonderful device and it is okay to use technology in ministry. It's okay to use technology in ministry. I heard people say, oh, computers are the mark of the beast. No, the mark of the beast is just what God said it is. It is three sixes. If it were something else, God would have told us. So it's okay to use technology uh, in ministry to help us uh, in what we do in ministry. So the Remarkable is a beautiful device and there are lots of videos on it. I'm not here to prom promote either uh, of the devices. I just want to talk about how we can use technology to help us in ministry. Um, so the Remarkable 2 is a beautiful device. It's lightweight. It's portable. Uh, I enjoy the desktop app that allows me to, if I create a PDF on my desktop, I can just drag it onto the app and turn on Wi-Fi on the Remarkable and it appears, it goes from my desktop to uh, the Remarkable in a matter of seconds. So that is awesome. Um, the pen is extra, which can be a pro or a con. Uh, it's a con because it's an added expense, um, but uh, there is a workaround if you decide you're deciding between the uh, premium pen with the eraser or the basic pen without the eraser. Um, you can use the lasso to the lasso tool to erase. Um, so let me show you how to do that. So you just click the lasso tool. and high circle what you want to erase and then cut and down here clear the clipboard and it's gone so if you know you want to save a few dollars and didn't want to get the premium pen and that's refreshing um, the screen is refreshing so if you want to save a few dollars you know the the basic pen will work as well also Oops, let's go back to the pen. You see that? Two finger tap will also remove the last stroke that you made before you lift the pen. So uh, it'll undo, it's like an undo. So um, if you, again, that's just a workaround for uh, not having the eraser. And there's also lots of templates that come with the Remarkable. Uh, so it is a great device. However, the con for me, the surface is textured. It's textured. And because it's textured, uh, it produces a scratchy sound. I don't know if you can hear that. It produces a scratchy sound. Um, so that was um, an annoyance for me, that scratchy sound as well as the feeling that it, it gives. Now, I am using the Kindle Basic Pencil with the Remarkable, so I don't know if a Remarkable pen will give me a different experience. 
Um, but it's just the scratchy feeling that just, uh, for me, didn't work out for me. And as a result of the textured surface, the nibs wore down a little faster. They wore down really fast um, compared to the scribe. Uh, also, another con is that there's no backlight. So if you're in a dark space or if you, the evening is transitioning, you're going to have to turn on the light or move to a different space. Um, so, And then the price. The price. It's a little pricey, I think, for what it is. And the fact that you have to get a purchase a pen separate. Um, that's just a kind, but that can also be a pro because you can purchase uh, any EMR pen, any EMR pen. Uh, well, I won't say any, but other EMR pens will work with the Remarkable. So, uh, again, it's a wonderful device. Just didn't work out for me. Just didn't work out for me. I love how thin and lightweight and portable it, it is. Um, but again, just didn't work out for me. So what did work out was this Kindle Scribe. I just, I didn't think I would like it. So I said, well, since I have it, let me open the box. And when I opened it up, immediately the feel is really smooth. It just feels good in the hand. Um... So when you turn it on, you put your password in to protect your device. You can set up a password rather. Okay. And uh, it's a Kindle e-reader, of course. Um, and again, there are lots of videos about this, but I, uh, so you can go and watch those, but uh, it's just a pleasurable writing experience. It's a more pleasurable writing experience for me than the Remarkable. It's very smooth. The pen just glide, glides across the screen. And it's just a pleasure to use. It's just a pleasure to use. The backlight, it has a backlight. So the first day I was using it, uh, I was using a Bible on my iPad and I was taking notes on the Kindle Scribe and then as the evening progressed, the screen began to light up. So I didn't have to leave, I didn't have to change rooms, I didn't have to get up and uh, turn on the light. The backlight proved to be a very big plus. Uh, in addition to, of course, we know it is an e-reader, so if you're a Kindle user, you're familiar with that. But I'm just here to talk about how it can be beneficial to you uh, in ministry. So we'll just um, hit the plus sign and we'll create a new notebook. Then, um, let's see, four, five, six. There are 18 templates that you can choose. Um, you can give your notebook a name. So we'll just get the traditional paper notebook and we're going to hit create. And so let's see. So we got our Bible here. And we're going to uh, just find a passage. Hmm, let's see where that one. Where was I at? Um, this is just not my this is not my Bible I normally use to study from. So, let's see. Okay, God will bless Israel. God will bless Israel, considering the time and the day that and all that's going on in Israel. I think this is a good passage. So, uh, God will bless Israel is what the heading of my Bible says right there. Okay, so I always put the date. Today's the 14th. So I don't like that, so let's get my eraser.
Okay, God will bless Israel. So I'm reading Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So we were going to minister from this one verse. And it shall come to pass that, that if thou shalt hearken diligently. So what is God requiring? There's a, there's a requirement. Hearken. You got to listen to God. Okay, and so I'm saying we because, of course, the promise was to Israel, Abraham's descendants. But if we have accepted Christ, we now are partakers of the same promise we've been grafted in right so when we're studying the scripture we can and um, when we're ministering the word we apply it to or we minister or we teach if we're teaching we discuss how it fit in that current day in that current in that time i'm sorry but we always want to make it fit today we always want to make it fit today otherwise uh it's just a a history lesson, which is not bad, but people want to know how can they be helped today? How can they move forward today? How can they be healed? How can their faith be strengthened? And the only way we can do that is to apply what we read in scripture today. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know the word still applies today, unless it is some type of tradition or something that has been done away with um, because of Christ. Now, the Old Testament, we have to be careful because we're under a new covenant now, right? So we don't have to adhere to all of the traditions and all of the uh, statutes, all of the things that they did in the Old Testament because Christ has freed us from that. Hmm? However, we still have to be holy, right? We still have to be holy. So, um, God is going to bless Israel, but the requirement is, number one, to hearken, to listen to God. What else does it say? To observe and do. Do anything? Mm -mm. Do all. Now, let's see. And then we're just to do all commandments. And then I want to highlight all because partial disobedience is still disobedience, right? So when I teach from this passage or minister from this, I want to accentuate all. Okay, so he says, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord will set thee high above all nations on the earth. God will set thee high. So how could that apply today? Well, favor, right? God will set us high as a result of our obeying God. Right? We receive favor. We receive favor. How do we know? Well, there's a passage that comes to mind, and I would have to Google it, but we can just write it down. Uh, he, he sets up and tears down. 
man or person, uh, Jesus found favor with God and man. So I'm just jotting those passages down that come to mind, and then I'm going to go back and uh, use an electronic Bible or use a concordance or whatever it is to find those scriptures that will support that God will set thee on high. All throughout scripture, we know God makes a difference. You can write that down. That's coming to mind. God makes a difference. Now you say, well, Sister Sherry, he says he's no respecter of person. He is not. But God makes a difference between those that are holy and unholy. Uh, believers and non-believers. We can find scriptures to support that. Jesus said, uh, the disciples asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus responds, because it is given to you to know, but not to them. It's given to you who walk with me, who talk with me to understand. Hmm? But to them, it is not. So God does make a difference. But I want to say that um, it's not his will to make a difference, but he does. But all they have to do is come to Christ to receive the same thing. Also, remember the passage where he's sent, uh, he's coming back as a shepherd to do what? Separating the sheep from the goats. Okay, so there will be a difference. And even in the end, some St. John 5, I believe it is. Uh, I have to find a verse, but that's where it comes to mind. Some are going to rise to eternal life. Some are going to rise to eternal damnation. All those that are in the grave are going to hear his voice, but they're going to be separate destinations. So, um, then the message can now become question the question now becomes the question that Moses asked I'm sorry the title of our message can now be whose side are you on Whose side are you on? So oftentimes you don't have the message right away. You don't have the title right away. But as you're studying and the Holy Ghost is bringing more things, a more word to you. Now you see where the Holy Ghost is going. I started out talking about God will bless Israel. Right. And in my mind, I was going to talk about all of the blessing. If we continue reading in Deuteronomy 28, he blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall be the fruit of the body, blessed shall be the uh, basket of thy store. In my mind, that's where I was going to go. But as I began talking, as the Holy Ghost began to speak to me, he began to show the difference, that there is a difference. And so, the question now becomes, or the subject now becomes, whose side are you on? Or whose side will you be with? Will you be standing with the sheep or will you be standing with the goats? So you can uh, continue to develop your sermon, your message, whether it be in person, whether it be online or Facebook or some other social media media platform, but I find, found that the Kindle Scribe is an excellent um, choice for helping us in ministry, for helping us in ministry. Then, let's say we're done with our uh, notes here, our rough draft, and you say, oh, well, I like pen and paper, you know, that's fine, you know what we can do? Oops. So let's go back home. Uh, I forgot to give it a title, but that's okay. Well, let's give it a title because now we know 
the title. Can we go back and name it? I think we can. Rename. So I click those three dots. I click rename. So now I know. It's I just call it whose side. Um, so now that I have my list of notes, if I want to come back to it, um, I can search by title. I remember the title that I gave it, whose side. So I want to get it to my computer so that I can print it. So you click your three dots and click share. Now I'm not going to click share here because your email address is going to pop up and then you hit send and boom, seconds later, it's on your computer or on your other device so that you can uh, have it uh, or print it or, uh, you know, back up for safekeeping, however you want to do that. But I enjoy the Kindle Scribe. It is an excellent tool for ministry. So... There's our technology moment in ministry. So let me know what you want to see. Let me know because the uh, video that I did showing how to create a sermon, a, a sermon outline, that was just a video I put together for my class. I didn't know it was public. I looked up and 5,000 people saw it, 10,000. So clearly, there are some of you out there who like information about ministry and how to do. I'm an ordained ministry minister, um, respected in my church by my uh, church leaders, by my pastor. I've been in the same church for 30 years. Amen. And God has increased and multiplied me. So I am fit to instruct. That's what God called me to do to, uh, Equip the fivefold ministry as well as the body of Christ, but the fivefold ministry. So let me know what you like to see. Let me know where you need help in ministry. That's what I'm here to do, according to Ephesians 4 and 11, to help edify you, to strengthen you so that you can be effective in the kingdom. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you need help with or what you'd like to, what kind of video you'd like to see. All right. God bless.